Zach Ertz could be coming back to Philadelphia. And yes, I'm that serious. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Yo, yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a great day today. So it seems like this week for the Eagles before the 49ers game, it's just getting crazy right now. Like, we're waiting on what's going on with Darius Leonard, and, you know, the Eagles are trying to get healthy for this week. A big game for the NFC this week. 49ers are coming to the link, and just so many things happening at one time. Uh, but we had some news that came out on Zach Ertz, and apparently um, it looks like he went on waivers um, asked for a release, wants to play for a contender. Um, I remember during the Super Bowl last year because it was in Arizona and he was an Arizona Cardinal. He went to the Super Bowl and was interviewed. And obviously he's going to retire Philadelphia Eagle, but had the interview and said he would always come back, you know, if there was a possibility down the road or something like that. Um, you know, so now going off waivers on his contract nobody is going to claim him on the contract that he is on so obviously it will that contract will dispense into a cheaper deal when he goes off waivers since nobody's going to pick it up so since he will be a free agent where is he going to go now it looks like it's going to be between the eagles and the ravens the news has been just coming out like crazy uh the ravens uh don't have mark andrews for the rest of the season and they're down a tight end the philadelphia eagles you know have been have been down dallas goddard um for a, a good week and it's going to be out you know a few weeks and it's going to be out for prob probably one more week it sounds like goddard might not be playing this week he's trying to push to play grant calcaterra um unfortunately um has been out first it was with a you know um concussion now he has another injury gonna be out another couple weeks so you're down a couple tight ends right now and why not make the move um and apparently the eagles have interest and it's been swirling and i think bringing zach Ertz back would be fantastic now Ertz hasn't had a fantastic year we're talking about not having you know Kyler Murray back into that offense for a long time this season Zach Ertz went on IR already once this year because the guy just can't stay healthy um but as a backup tight end that knows these players and and knows the front office has been here almost his whole career I mean at this point I don't see why this would be a, a bad move to be honest with you that, you know, having Jack Stahl, Zach Ertz. And then when Goddard comes back, you can still keep, um, you know, that, you know Zach Ertz on the roster if that's what they want to do. But I think this would be a pretty good move. And look, I'm not a big fan of bringing old vets back, but Zach Ertz could still play, okay? Uh, Zach Ertz has had to deal with Josh Dobbs. He's had to deal with Kyler Murray being out. And even, uh, it just hasn't been the year. This It's obviously, the uh, Atlanta, I mean, uh, sorry, Arizona's not the team, um, wasn't the best spot for him i don't blame him for leaving uh the cardinals and trying to seek out a contender something like that i could see him going to baltimore i can honestly see it um but i think realistically and i won't be mad if he signs somewhere else if that's what the case is if he feels like he'll have more of a starting job with baltimore for the rest of the season he might pick baltimore you know, he might have a starting job coming to Philadelphia, okay? He'll have the starting job in front of Jack Stahl. Even Jack Stahl is valued for his blocking. We'll get on the, obviously, the one pass I thought was really good where they do, like, the fake RPO inside handoff and kind of throw it to the tight end, which they do with Dallas Goddard all the time. Did it with Jack Stahl last week and against the Bills and knocked a couple players down. I thought that was really cool on the right sideline. Um so I think um, this is a major possibility, and you know we'll see what happens with this. But hey, I, I can't complain, and um, we're gonna find out. I'm not gonna be mad if he if, if he goes to the Ravens because he he will because I think you know obviously Zach Ertz will be the backup um, to Dallas Goddard when he comes back, and then it'll be Jack Stahl, and then Grant Calcaterra will probably be on practice squad, or maybe he'll just be put on. I don't know. You know, we'll see if they, you know, they'll probably protect him most likely, so he doesn't get claimed or anything. Um, so I think this would be, like I said, this is a no-brainer move. Like, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be the ma the guy this year to say, let's bring some old Eagles players back. Let's bring some guys back. But this isn't a move to where, you know, he's not productive. I think Zach Ertz coming back, and, and I think it would be perfectly fine. I mean, this is the perfect choice um, if that's where you want to go. And, um, 
you know what? I, I, I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. So I remember back in 2021 when Zach Ertz um, not only played through, uh, you know, the 21 season, but knowing he was going to get traded, he he cares about the front office. He cares about the fans. He cares about this. You know, it wasn't about the money or anything or, or trying to get or, or get more money or anything like that. I mean, he was going to get traded and he still played the 21 season, you know, as much as he possibly did. You know, he still played that primetime game when he knew, I think he knew before the game he was going to be traded after that game. And yeah, it was it was a really sad moment for him and definitely sad for us that we had to let him go. Dallas Goddard was, you know, really taking the torch, um, you know, was really taking the torch at that moment. And um, it was really hard to watch. It really was. Um but this is something I'm definitely not against at all. And we'll see what happens next couple days. Next few days, we'll see what transpires with this situation with Zach Ertz. Now, the Darius Leonard situation, which is a whole other situation that we've been kind of looking at as of right now um, uh, between the Dallas Cowboys. You know, he left the Dallas Cowboys on Tuesday without a deal. He left Philadelphia. Nick's been calling him the past couple days before he even came to Philly. Um Leonard is giving me really bad vibes. It's not even just him going to the Cowboys because at the end of the day, I don't even care. Okay, I don't even care if he goes to Dallas. Okay, this isn't like, oh my God, if we don't get him, I'm going to flip my shit and flip the hell out. And it's not one of those, it's not one of those situational type moments with a certain player that I need badly for this team. At the end of the day, if they need to get Christian Ellis in there and play, then that's fine. It is what it is. Wouldn't have mattered. Even if they sign Leonard, he won't be here for the 49ers game. It's going to be too late in the week at this point, and he's going to wait a few days anyway to make up his mind. So hopefully by Sunday, Monday, he'll make up his mind. Uh, Brian Baldy, there was some news that came up uh, with Brian Bollinger that he was on a radio show and said that believes that Shaq Leonard uh, is leaning towards the Cowboys with his decision. And that's perfectly fine. I don't even care. Um, you know, I think he he's using like one of two things. The first thing is he's using the Eagles as leverage or really and he really wants to go to the Cowboys or this is really about money. If this is really about money, go to Dallas. I don't give a shit. <laughs> go just go to Dallas. I if if you're you had two back surgeries last year, you played 70% of the snaps for the Colts this year, you're being underutilized, you're underperforming from what you should be as an all-pro. And you now you're being real picky about where you want to go. Like you have a ten and one team and an eight and three. To seriously, a ten and one team and an eight and three team. You know, what I mean, I don't know what the holdup is. I don't know why this is the hardest decision for him. Because really, I don't know why it's hard at this point. Pause. But if this is about him getting more money and hasn't really channeled himself to be a good player this past year, I am passing up on this so fast. I don't care. If this is really about a money situation more than what team he wants to go to, and he doesn't care what team, he's just like, ah, both teams are good, I just want more money, then he can go to the Dallas Cowboys. I don't care. Go to the Dallas Cowboys, go get your money, go get the extra whatever, because you haven't earned anything this year. You haven't earned a damn thing. You sign the contract, you should be willing that teams are offering you, and prove yourself, because you really haven't proved yourself yet this year. To garnish yourself another contract from another team, that's what... He should do. Um, and that's my whole take on the Darius Leonard situation. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes to Dallas. It doesn't. I mean, honestly, I, I'm i not making a big deal about it. You know what I mean? I'm not making a big deal. The Kobe Dean will be back soon. Zach Cunningham will probably be out one more week. We'll see what happens. We'll probably won't even have him for the Cowboys game. Um, so we'll see. So the roster moves uh, for the day. Uh, it says it says uh, bands, uh, linebacker Ben Van Summeren, the, the uh, undrafted free agent from Michigan State. Um, is to the active roster. I'm actually a really big fan of Ben Van Sermon. I think he's a little bit of a project right now. I mean, he's a special teams ace, but um, he's got a, he's he's very very. I mean, the guy just can't tackle. I mean, I think he's one of the most like freak athletes that we have. But we need to get him in, get him into like a football motion of like he needs to know how to do things on an NFL roster at his position. And I just feel like his tackling is just not great. Because even the preseason, I thought he was... He could have made a lot of tackles in some of these preseason games we had this offseason. And unfortunately, he just... he's a He misses a lot of tackles. Um, but he's got, like... He's got some of the side view angles of, uh, you know, his athleticism and his agility and change of direction. I think he's very good in that. And that's why he's very good on special teams for the Eagles. So, which is cool. So, 
They signed Josea Scott back. Now, wide receiver Cam Sims um, is part of the roster um, as well. Uh, they signed him. He was with Washington. I think he's like 6'5". He's another big receiver for the Eagles um, to the practice squad. So, guy really can't catch. Guy has a big body, but it is what it is. Like, they're just adding another receiver to the roster. Um, so, that's just another, you know, nothing to brag about or anything. Just adding another receiver, and, and that's all that really is. Um, Greg Ward was released from the practice squad. This team has never liked Greg Ward. Greg Ward was Doug Peterson's guy. Nick has never liked Greg Ward. Even when he first got, even when Nick first got here, like he treated uh, Greg Ward like the redhead stepchild. Like, I don't care what you did. I don't care. I mean, look, and Greg Ward, I think, can find a roster spot somewhere else or a backup role or something on a bad team or something like that. But that's just what it is. So Josiah Scott was released the other day. So that, I think part of that release was obviously... Um, maybe for Leonard and maybe they thought they were going to get him and then the change of mind and then kind of bring uh, Josiah Scott back. And Josiah Scott is more of a, you know, he's a quick fix for your defense. And that doesn't, it doesn't mean he's going to play fantastic, but he knows the scheme, knows the players. And, you know, when you have a guy that just already knows everything, it's a lot easier to sign a guy like that. So he comes back. It is what it is. Ben Van Sermer, and you need more depth at linebacker this week, which showing that, um, it's showing that Sean, uh, Sean Cunningham is, is not go Zach Cunningham is not going to be playing, uh, you know, this week, uh, even at practice, you know, Fletcher Cox has an uphill battle this week with the groin injury. He's really pushing Fletcher Cox is pushing to play this week. Um, it's probably not going to happen. Unfortunately, Milt Williams is coming back from concussion protocol, which is really good. So that's great. He missed a week or two. So, uh, well, Milton coming back is a, is a great thing. Um, but Fletch is going to be a big loss for this weekend. Um, give more reps. Uh, give more reps to Jordan Davis. Give more reps to Jalen Carter. I mean, I'm not really making a big deal out of Fletch not being in the game, but definitely more of a push, more from these defensive ends this week. They can always move a defensive end to the inside. Um, you know, they've done it with Brandon Graham. They'll probably, you know, they, they could they can move some defensive ends to the inside for a better pass rush. It's a little bit of a mismatch. I think the 49ers right side of the line is not as great as everyone thinks it is. Obviously, Trent Williams is one of the best left tackles in the league. So it's it's gonna be pretty, pretty hard on that side, but not unbeatable at all. You know, to get to Brock Purdy, I think is the weak link to that offense, regardless. Um, and lastly, here's something that's really fun. The Eagles have been so quiet. I mean, the Eagles have been so quiet. Like, they haven't been talking back. Besides Bradbury, besides Reddick saying something this past offseason, but Reddick has always had, had said something about the 49ers and how much they've been crying. The players have been crying, but the fans have been crying. It's so bad right now that the fans are actually creating fake posts that Eagle players are saying screwed up shit. Like, I found this guy, and it was blowing up like crazy. And, like, like Jalen Carter said, I wasn't there last year, so I can't speak on them. But based on what I heard, the guys here show we should be able to kill them. Like, really dude like you're making up posts that eagle players literally said the the picture is literally from not even probably even uh, probably from the off season this picture that you're seeing of jalen carter like they're on it the fans are actually making up like statements from eagle players talking shit about the 49er players the players on that team to get a rise out of like they're literally like because they know the eagles are quiet and the Eagles are literally have not been speaking back besides Bradbury saying, yeah, you know, I'm just going to play the best I possibly can, you know, taking the high road. No players taking that low road like these other 49ers players have been since last year and last offseason and during this year. OK, it's actually really sad what 49er fans are actually doing, uh, whether these are troll accounts or not, which they probably are. Well, I don't doubt it. I don't get how people have so much time on their hands to do stupid shit like this. So that's all I got to say. So, Zach Ertz, Darius Leonard, and, you know, obviously some roster moves. Cam Sims to the practice squad. Fletcher Cox really pushed to play this week, but it looks like Goddard's not going to play this week. I mean, he's pushing, but I think the doctor is really forcing him to be out what, one more week. Um, and then we'll be back for the Dallas Cowboys game. I understand we need Dallas Goddard, but we'll see what happens. Getting Zach Ertz would be perfect. Perfect. With Grant Calatera already being out another couple weeks already, he came off two weeks of a concussion. I think he's going to be off another couple weeks with another injury. I forgot what the what the second injury was, um, but he's he's out now, so you're losing depth at tight end, and this is the perfect. It's really up to Zach Ertz. Does he want to be a pure time start, a pure, a pure full time starter for the Ravens, or does he want to come in with the Eagles and be with his former team? You know that he's been with his whole career, so should be interesting. 
um, and a lot of news this week. So if you guys have uh, a good day for the rest of your day, <clears throat> rest of your day, can't talk. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video as well. It does help the channel a lot. And um, yeah, see you guys on the next one. Chicks, well, follows a lot. Peace out, guys. Peace.